Hey guys, today we are taking a look at EVE Online and I'm going to be showing you the basics of your ship. Basically what you can fit on your ship, where you should fit them, and how to basically understand the information that you're given about your ship. So we're going to take a look here and this is my own catalyst that we're looking at right now. Now we're going to start off with the very basics, okay? If you look here in the center you can see the ship itself. Very shiny. Okay, now Follow my mouse on the screen, and you're going to see over here, we have tree boxes. These are your rig slots. Basically, once you research, uh, sorry, train your skill in um, rigging, you can install rigs on your ship that it can increase your armor, your shielding, pretty much any aspect that you want to increase can be increased here. But they normally come with penalties. So if you take a look here, I've installed a small processor which increases my CPU amount which I'll explain in a second and two auxiliary current routers which increase my power grid output. Now basically every rig that you install will have some sort of drawback with it. I believe the ancillary current routers are um, increased signature radius if I'm not mistaken. No, actually there is no negativity with that one which is good. Um, it might be with the CPU one. Show that there. Yeah, shield recharge rate bonus is minus 5%. So there's always some little... you're losing something for gaining something else. So, that's your rig slots there. Up here you have your turrets. This is your turret slots. Okay. Now, up above the boxes, where I'm moving my mouse at the moment, you can see little circles. Those little circles donate how many turrets, as in lasers, you can actually install in these slots. So here we've got eight, so every single one of these slots can fit a laser. Some ships will only have like, ten, uh, say, five out of six available for turrets. The other one has to be used for something like a tractor beam or something non-offensive or mining. So there you go. Actually, I'll show you an example of that. I've got a ship here in my hangar. One second there, just going to bring up my inventory. Yeah, here we go. We've got my Venture here. Now the Venture is a mining ship. We're just going to go back to the fitting window. And as you can see here, we've only got two circles above the weapon slots, which I have mining lasers in. The third one, I couldn't put another laser in, so we had to put like a salvager. So it's always something to bear in mind. Now, I'm just going to go back to my catalyst because better for showing you what you can put in your ships. So basically you have your turret hard points and you might have an additional slot for salvagers or tractor beams etc. Over here you have your medium power slot. Now both of these are um, usable for things like an afterburner which helps make your ship go faster, shield boosters, shield repairers, some of those you can actually put here as well. So it's always something to bear in mind. You need to keep one of these slots free for either a micro warp drive or for an afterburner. New pilots, it's going to be an afterburner you need to have in that slot. You, sh you get one straight away once you start the game and you're trained up in the skill. So there we have those. And down the bottom we've got the low power slots. Low power obviously meaning taking up less of your power grid or your CPU. So down here you can put like armor plating or you can put weapon upgrades, mining upgrades depending on the ship, etc. So there you have those. If you look here you have CPU. This tells you how much um, computer processing units you have on board your ship. As you can see mine is 246.3 and power grid which is 109.5. Some uh, modules which is what we call the stuff that you can place in your ship will increase these or may decrease them as a penalty. So it's always something to bear in mind. Now if you look over here to the left of the, sh the ship picture, this is basically a rundown of your ship's statistics at the moment. So as she's completely unfitted, she has no um, offensive DPS at the moment, drone DPS or missile DPS. We're going to change that in a minute. We can actually change it now. I'm just going to go into my inventory and just waiting for my inventory to open up. There we go. 
So if you want to load something onto your ship as well, may as well kill two birds with one stone here. You go into your inventory, you either buy a weapon or if you already have it. Now I'm scrolling down. You can see here I've got 150mm prototype guns. So I'm going to install one of those onto the ship here. Then I'm going to install another one and another one so that we basically are filling up the slots here. As you can see, the turret hard points are filling up with weapon icons. So there we go. That's how you arm your ship as well, which is a very important tool in this game, I think. So there we go. And we're also going to add a afterburner. Yeah, we'll allow that one in there. And let's see what else we got here. Da -da -da -da. Okay, we're going to put some tracking enhancers, etc., on board there. Now, I'm not going to go into detail explaining what each of these modules actually do, because to be honest with you, I don't really know what every module does myself. But you can play around with it, you'll find it out. For new players, the most important thing is an afterburner, turrets, maybe some light shielding for your ships. Uh, personally, I use uh, shield boosters. So, let's get back on track here. And just going to install some, well, actually load my guns with some ammo so I can show you the change in DPS. So just let me find some ammo there. Okay, we'll just use, um, yeah, that'll do it. So you just drag the ammo over again and it'll automatically fill all your ship's guns up. So in case you missed that, you drag your ammo from your inventory over the picture of the ship, release the left mouse button, and all these gun icons will change to ammo boxes with white boxes here to denote how full they are. As you can see they're now all full. So there you go. So here now we have on the side here your list of your offensive DPS. So as you can see I've got 71.8 DPS. Veteran player is probably laughing at how pitiful that is but note I only use lead charges on that one. So there you go, that's your DPS, how much damage per second theoretically you can do in your ship. Uh, here is drone DPS. Uh, some ships you can uh, have drones that you can launch and they can do damage as well. Or you can put a missile launcher and likewise it does damage. Okay, next down we have got defense. So the first one up here is how much your shield recharges per second. So as you can see, my shield recharges at four hit points a second. Now, these signify the types of damage your ship is resistant to. So we've got explosive damage. You tend to suffer that from missiles. Shock, shock. Um, kinetic damage is basically um, impact damage, speed damage from the projectiles. You have thermal damage, which is basically heated shots. Um, lasers tend to do that a lot more than anything else. And EM damage. Some ships mount EM weaponry as well. So next down, we've got your shield resistances and hit points. So your shield has 937 hit points, and it takes 500 seconds to recharge it. You have zero EM damage, 20% thermal, 40% kinetic, and 50 explosive. If you move down again, you have your armor plating, 960 hit points. As you can see here, 50 EM, 35 thermal, 35 kinetic, and 10% explosive. Now here you have structure, damage, uh, structure hit points. So you have 1,000 of those. Basically once all your armor is stripped away, you're down to this. As you can see, it's got no resistances, so this shit vanishes very, very quickly. And next one down, we have targeting. So here you have your magnetometric sensor strength. You have the scan resolution. You have signature radius. That means how quickly uh, enemy ships can lock onto your ship and you have maximum locked targets. That's how many targets you can lock on your system's computer. Now in here you've got navigation, so that's the master of your ship. You've got the inertia modifier that basically determines how fast your ship will travel. And your warp drive speed, which is tree IAU, which is about average for most ships. Well, the small ships anyway. <laughs> you don't even really notice warp with the large ships, I don't think. <laughs> 
So there you have it. And also here in the lower right side of the circle around my ship, in the red you can see power grid, so that denotes your power grid usage. Or in the blue you've got your CPU. Now basically every item has uh, takes up a bit of CPU or power grid. Here we're going to check the information on the tracking enhancer. So if you want to see how much an item takes up on your ship's um, computer or its power grid needs, you go into the information panel for that item, you go to fitting, and it'll show you there what slot it goes into. So that's a low power slot. It shows you CPU usage is 10 TF, so that's 10 of my 246, and power grid usage 1 MW. As you increase your skills, it can help lower your CPU usage, power grid usage, or increase it uh, overall so that you're able to fit bigger and better modules on your ship. As you know, as a new pilot, you might not grasp the concept of your skill training, but it's very, very important because the more you learn your skills, and the more you put in towards ship-based skills, it really enhances the what you can place onto your ship and what sort of a ship you can fly. So highly recommend you train up your skills in navigation, um, shield manipulation, pretty much any of the shield options is a <laughs> good way to go. Um, there's a large number here. I'll, I'll actually cover that in another um, tutorial video, what skills you need to do to increase your ship, but ask around on the lobbies though as well because it's very very important so you got that there now that's that so that's pretty much everything on board your ship oh nearly forgot down here you have your cargo hold in the lower left hand side as you can see 450 is my space and drone hold as you can see I've got no space for drones so that's basically your ship capabilities and, oh, missed one thing, sorry about that. Yeah, I missed two things, actually. Up here you can see launcher hard points. So, over here you've got turret hard points, but certain ships can mount missile launchers. So, as you can see, my ship has no missile um, launcher hard points, but if it did, there would probably be a box here. Then we have, over here, your capacitor. Basically, your capacitor is like your um, power generator. It's not your power grid, it's your power generator. So if you start like suffering really, if you switch on every module on your ship, okay, or you suffer an EM attack, your power grid, uh, your uh, capacitor status will go down, meaning you can use less and less modules. Every single item in the, your ship uses um, capacitor. I'll just show you there and show you the info on one of my guns. So fitting, power grid usage is 8.46, CPU 14.55, so it's pretty power intensive. But it also uses capacity, uh, capacitator energy. So we're just going to find out there. Activation cost is, yeah, here we go. The activation cost is 1.112055 GJ. Up here you can see we have got 772, so that uses 1.11 for every shot that it fires. So we got 8 of these firing, that's 8 shots. Now as you can see it says here we're stable, so you need to keep an eye on that as well. If you put like really high capacity weapons or modules on board your ship, they're going to drain your capacitor rapidly and you might not have enough left to warp away from a conflict or to recharge your shields properly, so always be very, very careful with that, guys. Okay, that's everything on this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope these videos are proving useful. Please like the videos if they are. Thank you very much for watching, and hope you all have a good day.